the last uh, nearly 20 years. Um, but going forward, we want to be known as a brewery that is very innovative and comes out with new styles and keeps up with trends. Um, and so that's where we are uh, really excited to have this new tap room um, and the possibilities of having 17 beers on tap so we can not only have our flagships but also highlight our new beers that we're going to come out with. Um, and so um, this just gives us a much better opportunity um, along with making this brewery a destination for people to come and try new and exciting beers. The reason why people go to a brewery is they want to try the new experimental beers. Um, you're getting the freshest beer on tap and you're getting the stuff that the brewers and the, and the cellar guys uh, take really pride in and experimenting and, and creating new flavors and being innovative and exciting uh, because this is the most exciting beer culture in the world right now, American craft brewery. Uh, to highlight some of those, uh, like I said, the Session Dark Lager. Uh, it is an easy drinking beer. Uh, I love that term, easy drinking, because I like easy drinking beers. Um, it's an easy drinking dark lager. Uh, it's, uh, lagers is another one of my sort of pet projects um, as uh, we go forward. Um, I think in, when you hear about craft brewing, you immediately think IPAs and you think ales. And those are typically the most exciting beers. Those are, uh, there's a wide variety of those beers and people already know those. Uh, I think that exciting aspect can be translated to lagers extremely easily. I think there's a lot more lagers out there than people realize. Uh, there are exciting different styles, and I think um, bringing the lager portion of speakeasy ales and lagers uh, to the front is something that's going to be uh, very exciting, and, I, and it's something very dear to my heart going forward. Um, the Session Dark Lager is the first one of those new lagers that we're coming out with. Um, so it is uh, lower in alcohol, ABV uh, 4%, um, easy drinking, uh, like I said, uh, with just a touch of malt characteristic, gives it that dark color. Um, you know, great during the summer or during the winter. Um, the next one, the Speakeasy Saison. Uh, this one is a true work in progress, so we're coming out with this one in the spring. Um, and uh, the Saison is going to be a great addition uh, to our lineup. Uh, it's very rustic, um, very traditional, um, um, Belgian style, a um, little bit of spice. A uh, little bit of uh, fruit characteristic, obviously the esters that you know and love from a Belgian uh, yeast strain uh, going to come through and I think it's going to be a perfect addition for our spring seasonal coming out um, to reintroduce us to the market. Um, so that will be available uh, very soon. You're literally getting the first taste today. Um, so um, that one's really exciting. And then um, going again, the Bootlegger's Cut, that's a bourbon barrel aged stout. Um, this one's different because, uh, you know, we have, in the past, Speakeasy is very known for their um, bold, very alcoholic flavors. Um, as you can see, you know, the Imperial Stout, the Godfather and Syndicate, all 9.5% above. Um, this one's uh, a little more subdued, so what we're aiming for there is a barrel aged stout, but something that, you know, you can maybe drink one or two of, um, as opposed to having a snifter. Um, so it's a uh, barrel aged stout, but it's a little more approachable. Uh, really good. This one's also just available in the tap room. Never going to get it anywhere else. Um, so enjoy that while you can. Um, and then the holdout stout. And that is my true baby. Uh, the holdout stout is, um, uh, I'll have to tell you the story before we get into the actual uh, brew itself. Um, we started this brew when Speakeasy uh, was not going through its best times. That. Uh, our future was uncertain, and we wanted to um, we wanted to do something in true speakeasy style. Uh, and so what we did was uh, during the early days of the receivership, um, there was only eight of us. We were the holdouts. Um, we wanted to make sure that speakeasy uh, survived and it was something that would carry on. Um, so during those early days, the eight of us uh, decided that we, if we're going to come on this the other side, we need to prove that we can make a beer. We needed to make a beer that was ready to go when the doors opened. And we needed one that would last the ups and downs and the uncertain timeline that we were facing uh, at the time. And so what we did was we took an inventory of our, of our raw materials. Uh, we whipped up a recipe uh, using the stuff we had on hand. And um, what we ended up with was uh, the holdout stout. 
Um, it's an oatmeal stout, a uh, little higher alcohol, 7%, nothing too overbearing, but enough to hold up to uh, some time if need be. Um, smooth, roasty, uh, I'm also a very big malt and stout dark beer fan, um, so this one, uh, I was very excited to, to be able to brew one, um, but what it stands for, I think, is uh, the true testament of this beer. This is the beer that is going to be, uh, uh, symbolizes speakeasies, grittiness, resilience, much like our neighborhood. Um, this is a gritty beer that we want, that we brewed during uncertain times, and I think it's held up really well. Thank you very much, and here it is. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Um, and so we're very excited about this beer. Uh, and um, and I think it tells a really good story, and I think this brewery is a very good story. It's a very successful story, and that's what we're that's what we're going to go through in the future. So um, thank you very much. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Well, you have one more surprise for you. Um, we have a firkin of prohibition with uh, mold mold wine spices. Um, this is a Christmas party after all. Uh, so we're going to tap that immediately after this, um, and then we're also going to get some uh, brewery tours going. So I think some people have signed up for tours. Um, we may be running just a tad delayed, but uh, absolutely. And then, uh, and like Seth said, the uh, crawler machine, which is uh, kind of hidden here in the corner. Um, brand new, again, for the tap room. This is a great way to uh, get people to take beers to go with them. Uh, you don't have to remember to bring in your big last growler anymore. Uh, you can come in, leave here with uh, a crowd that we fill for you. It'll last a little bit longer and um, uh, is in a more manageable spot size, especially with some of the big, bold alcoholic beers that we have. You don't have to worry about sharing with your buddies. Uh, so, uh, once again, thank you very much for coming out. Uh, looking forward to everyone um, enjoying some speakeasy beer, um, some Hunter's Point beer, and uh, thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah.